where Lee Chess plays. I'm back after a couple weeks absence. Sorry for joining mid-game. I had to uh, adjust my setup real quick. It still looks slightly scuffed, but I think it'll work for today. But shout out to everyone on Twitch and YouTube as well. We are broadcasting on both platforms. As I just heard myself on YouTube. Greetings to both sets of viewers there. Hello, K Buckby in the Twitch chat. I see you. Howdy, howdy. Yeah, so we're playing two hours of three plus zero blitz. This is the first game against Blood Math, Bloodbath Mc, McRath. Let's go ahead and play E4. Let's be a little aggressive here. Maybe, maybe throw in E3 as well, because I assume White's going to move the knight maybe to G5. Okay, they play back to H2. I'm feeling like a pawn sacrifice. Trying to attack that weak pawn when white captures. Maybe even queen c7. Hello, WSK as well. WSK says, your old videos help me save lost positions. Good. Excellent. Always nice to save lost positions. Pedersen Kid, greetings. Good afternoon. Uh, check. Check E3. I think we got to throw it in. You know, if not for the smothered mate attempt, then at least to uh, induce E3 and then take the pawn. Oh, it would have been nice to get the smothered mate. It really would have been pretty cool there. Would have been a nice nice version of it. I wouldn't have even taken the, the white queen. But we have this, and I think knight takes G3. It's just going to be the move here. K Buck B says, who's taking down Finns today? Any takers? Yes, I hope. Maybe it can be you, K Buck B. Hello, Fit Tony, by the way. Diffuser. What's up? Hmm. Should we play for an attack? My knight looks a little sketchy, I gotta say. On uh, the G3 square. So here, maybe Queen F4 will be the answer. As much as I would like to, to play that. So what else could I do? I mean, I could trade queens. I think this is actually a pretty good move. Queen d4. Mm. My opponent typing in the chat. I might just have to trade queens here. You know? Sometimes you just got to swap. And then we're going to block the check and hopefully get this guy out. Mildly uncomfortable in the short term, but yeah, knight coming back here. We saved the knight. We also stopped bishop d6. Very important. I'll be curious, though. I'll go back and look at the analysis, see if there's anything better than queen takes d4. Thank you, steakhead chess. I did get a haircut recently. Hello to Praveen, Dominic, and have fun on Twitch. Or on YouTube, I should say. Uh, the user have fun on YouTube asks, Hi, John, how much time do you spend studying chess these days? Honestly, not very much. Far less than I would like. But it's been a busy last couple of years. And most of what I do chess-wise these days is what you see on stream. But I will get back to studying at some point. <laughs> There's too much chess knowledge to absorb. I need to get back in that habit. There's always something more to learn in this game. It's a beautiful thing. Hello, James Ramsden. Thank you all for spending some of your Sunday here. All right, all right. Take. Should I go here? Let's try it. I'm just trying to budge this knight. I mean, yeah, knight e5, probably a good move. Uh, Bloodbath is playing pretty well. They lost that pawn early on, but I think they're they're doing very well in this position. And uh, the past, you know, let's say 20 moves or so. They're making me work hard. Mm, I'm going to keep this. I probably shouldn't have jumped there in the first place. We're going to start targeting the pawns now. Go after the pawns. Whose pawns are weaker? Hard to say. Oh, I have a dastardly trap I'm going to try to set up. Watch this. Oh, I didn't. he didn't allow me to do it. I really got to watch my, my time, though. 
no doubt. Oh, that's checkmate. <laughs> At first, I didn't see that the F3 square was covered. But that is checkmate. Surprise checkmate. Probably a good thing, because I was looking pretty bad on the clock. So good game, Bloodbath. Uh, let's just peek at the analysis board real quick. I do wonder. I think, Bloodbath, you should take that pawn when it hits E3. Um, oh, the computer disagrees. It actually says move the knight. I'm a little surprised by that. You did play knight F3, but maybe if you're going to move the knight, yeah, you probably want to move it elsewhere, because uh, the G3 point is kind of weak. Yeah, queen d4, though, was a nice recovery move. Looking for a queen swap when that kind of blocks my attacking potential. It's not such a huge advantage for black after this. Yeah, so you found some good moves. Thank you for the game. Okay, the challenges are rolling in here. Just a reminder to challenge to 3 plus 0, blitz. No increment or anything. It can be casual or rated. So Noliano challenged me to rate it. My uh, rating is on the chopping block. Yeah, accidental mating net, exactly. The best kind. Hello, Milad. Okay, we have a scotch. Is it going to be more of a gambit? No, just a pure scotch game. Let's see how much I remember here. Okay, kind of a cool move you can play in this position is queen f6, threatening checkmate. You do not have to recapture the knight right away. This type of idea was made famous in the modern classic. Um, uh, what's that guy's name? Moist Critical. XQC versus Moist Critical from PogChamps. I think Noliano is going to see the mate on F2 threat, though. Yeah, I did move to a new place. I've been here about three months now, though. Hello, symbiotic spirit. Uh, also, Opa Yemi. Uh, I, no plans at the moment to go for the Grandmaster title. I'm just not playing and studying. If I am playing, it's very casual stuff online. I haven't played a tournament in two years. I'm getting the itch, though, I gotta say. But I still don't have any firm plans yet. The Moist Immortal. I like that. <laughs> okay, maybe Rook D8 coming in. I like my development here. I have doubled pawns, but, you know, doubled pawns, you can't just look at them in a vacuum and say that they're weak all the time. Double pawns yield open files. So I have this file to work with as a result of the double pawns. Uh, also, they can sometimes work with the pawn behind them to control these adjacent squares really nicely. So I like the fact that d5 and b5 are under black's control in this position. Now I'm hitting the white queen. White has to retreat to e2. Now here I got some interesting possibilities, right? I have tricky moves like bishop a3 or bishop b4. Kind of thinking this move might be the best move. I think I see a defense for black, uh, for white rather, but they're going to have to get creative if my calculations are accurate here. Defuser says, are you going for a new title is the equivalent of asking an academic. Are you writing a new book? Yeah. <laughs> Probably the most common question I receive. So much so that I joke that the only reason I want to become a grandmaster is so people stop asking me when I'm going to become a grandmaster. <laughs> No, but I, I don't care that much. You know, it's a natural question to ask. So um, understandable that people, people want to know. I'm flattered. So this is the idea, taking away the defense of the knight on c3. And yeah, Smear, I think you are correct. I think bishop c1 was the only move here for white to avoid writing, uh, to avoid, <laughs> avoid writing a book, avoid losing material. <laughs> I, I was simultaneously reading Matt and Nesty's comment as I made my last comment. I am not writing a book, no.
Hello, Grey Sensei. All right, let's just castle now. I'm only up a pawn, but it could very well become more because this is loose. And also, my opponent is way down on the clock. Let's just gobble, gobble. Oh, actually, I'm up more than that. I forgot I want a rook. <laughs> I picked up the rook on b2. <laughs> I was really distracted for that sequence. I was up a rook and a pawn. <laughs> Thank you for the game, Nolianu. Yeah, so here, Nolianu, I think the better move is bishop e3. Developing and defending the knight on d4. Yeah, you can go bishop e3. I would probably still play queen f6. That is the main line. And then you could play c3. That's typically how they handle that. Thank you, Yarukov, on YouTube for tuning in for the first time. Excellent. Thanks again, Noliano, for the game. BN146 is up. 2135. Here we go. Thank you, Defuser. Yeah, I would like to write a book sometime. I mean, I've written chessable courses, so a little bit different, but uh, a lot of material in those. BN, are you there? Open up. You got a game to play? Throw some water on your face. Better not make me knock again. <laughs> All right. Give you one more courtesy knock. And then we got to go. There we go. Usually when you knock a couple times, it works. They get the message. They hear it. They leap out of bed. And, uh... They answer the call. <laughs> Let's take with the knight. Queen takes is a little bit more popular, but I actually more often prefer taking with the knight. But some purists might argue that the knight is better off on c6 because it aims at d4. Hello, Shernick. I'm doing well. How are you? Greetings to Celatine live, by the way, from Stuttgart, tuning in from Germany. So when white plays d4, I believe, okay, I can take and play d5 if I want. Yeah, let's do that. I could also leave the tension. Sometimes you do that in this line, but I think here, this is probably just the better thing to do. And we'll see if white is okay with my knight coming into e4 or if they want to strictly try to prevent that. Hmm, okay. Well, I'm happy to take. We'll give white this isolate upon. That's fine. Oh, excellent, Chernik. Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? Haven't done Lee chess plays for a few weeks. Hello, Barsoro as well from Poland. Nice. Yeah, hopefully this is a suitable time of day to get, you know, a wide amount of viewers, wide number of viewers. Although Srinivas does say it's too late for India and the rest of Asia. Yeah, you know, it's hard to find a time that matches everyone's time zone preferences. So I do hear you there. Okay, now, very important that white does not take with a pawn. That would be a one-way ticket to getting checkmated. Takes with the queen. All right, so I think I'm somewhat better here, right? Because my opponent has an isolated pawn, but they may try to offload it. So let's be careful how we play this position. I'm thinking bishop f6 or bishop d6. I don't quite know. Let's go bishop f6. I feel like white's just going to park the queen back here and then probably put the bishop on e3 in the near future. So I'm on the fence as to whether that was the best decision for me. You know what? Let's just play queen d5. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch this up. I'm actually going to accept and isolate a pawn myself, but I'm going to try to get my rook into c2. That's the new plan. 
That would have been interesting, Grey Sensei. Didn't think about that move, but probably White would have retreated, but maybe then I could have gone to D5. This looks interesting, though. I, I kind of like this plan of going Rook C2. Should still be somewhat better, because my Rook has access to that square, and this is a bad bishop for White. They're most likely going to wedge it in between these two pawns in the near future, but it's, it's passive. Can I play a game against the simple eval bot? What is that? Uh, Metagenomics asked, John, if you could play any player from history, why would it be Morphe? <laughs> yeah, it would be Morphe. I just think that would be such a cool experience. And playing someone who was a chess genius before there was a large body of theory and understanding about the game would be a very interesting experience. Okay, White's time here is a serious issue. Uh, let's solve the back rank issue first. And next, I think I'm going to try to double up. Probably a position where White's got to look for counterplay by um, giving up a pawn soon. They're not going to be able to hold both of these pawns. So it's a matter of what way, in what way does White look for counterplay. It's probably a pretty good one. Ooh, I don't know. I'm going to take here. Give them the most amount of options <laughs> to mull over. There is no increment. All right, that is game over. Thank you for the game, BN146. Look tough, maybe defensible for you towards the end. This is the moment I was sort of debating what to do. Ah, Grace Sensei, you're right. Rook C5 is the top move, one of the top moves here from the engine. It's a nice one. Taking advantage of the pin. And I think trying to transfer the rook to d5. I didn't mind how the game turned out, though. Maybe white can gradually equalize here, but I'm kind of liking the pressure black has here. And most importantly, I was up a minute. So, yeah, BN, I think you got to play e5 here. I don't, yeah, knight c3. The computer also doesn't like it. Although it's a developing move, that, that weakness on d4 is... Just going to be a liability for the foreseeable future. It's hard to offload that pawn. <laughs> Thank you, Kimia Ash Asherly. All right. We're up to 50 challenges now. Let's keep rolling. It's a quokka. It's a quokka. Let's play a French. What is a quokka? Quokka is an animal, right? Is it some sort of bird? Yeah, I was thinking the same, Defuser. How did my Corporate Chess League lecture go? Uh, it was great, K-Buckby. Yeah, it was awesome. So I did a, league, uh, a lecture for a league that's being played on Lee Chess. Has been played on Lee Chess, I think, for the last few seasons. Uh, it's put on by the Charlotte Chess Center. And that was last Thursday. And yeah, everyone had a good time. It wasn't like a massive turnout to the point where people couldn't ask questions. So it was on Zoom. There were, I think, about 25 people there playing in this league. It's available to all company teams in North America. So if you're employed in a company, especially a larger company where you might have a lot of players to choose from, but it can be a company of any size, I believe, you can enter this corporate chess league for North America and um, yeah, it's very well attended. There's a ton of teams. What was the lecture on? The lecture was honestly on just general improvement topics. Uh, I tried to pick practical stuff. It was only an hour-long lecture, so I tried to pick practical topics that I often talk about on my videos, to be fair, that would be relevant to a fairly wide range of competitive but not professional players. Ooh, Quoka is really going after me here but I don't think that sacrifice is sound. So I was talking about stuff like time management, uh, planning, 
calculation, you know, these are all pretty broad topics, but I'm trying to select bite-sized examples that are relevant to all those things. Yeah, no follow-up to that sacrifice exactly. It's really hard to make a sacrifice like that work, giving up a piece for a pawn when you don't have additional attackers. Line up with the queen and defend this bishop. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I hope any of you think about that league. It's it's really pretty cool to be in a league of uh, you know friends or coworkers. I re that's actually some of the best. Well, I just missed a free queen. <laughs> some of the best times I've had in chess is when I've been playing in a team capacity, or there's like a you know, a sense of camaraderie with uh, a, a competition beyond just yourself, even if it's just a fun competition. I saw a free piece, so I turned down the queen. <laughs> Have fun on YouTube says, if you're not studying chess these days, how do you spend your time? <laughs> Well, I have been traveling a little bit lately. I just got back. That's why we didn't have Lee Chess plays the past two weeks. I was in Vegas for a few days with some friends. Yeah, I'm not going to miss Knight Takes G5 this time. And then I was in uh, Charlotte, actually, kind of like half for fun and half hanging out with the Charlotte Chess Center guys. Here's the plan. Where's my mate here? Rook G2, King H1. There is no mate in one, as far as I can tell. Nor is there even a mate in two. That's kind of strange. It seems like there should be a mate in two. I guess we got to go for a mate in three. There it is. Right? I'm not missing anything there. Thank you. It's a Quokka for the game. Yeah, that is the move I failed to play that Chess Ant put in there, right? <laughs> right there. I made the classic mental error of just having one move in mind and not considering other moves, like Knight takes G5. Is there no mate in two here? Yeah, just a mate in three. A couple mate in threes. All right. All right. Thanks again for the game. It's a quokka. Did we ever figure out what a quokka is? Uh, Spore asks, hi, I just sent a challenge. Any chance I'll make it? Uh, yes. You know, there's 50 challenges in the queue, but it looks like today's turnout for Lee Chess Plays is a little bit lighter than normal. Usually I'm getting upwards of like 100 challenges round about this time. So, yeah, decent, decent chance. I mean... Probability says no, because there's only a certain amount of games I can get to in these two hours, but do stick around if you have the time. Mm, okay, how do I play this? I think I play h6 here. Just catching up on the chat. Uh, thank you to Noloano. Yeah, oh, that was my opponent from earlier. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for being a longtime viewer. I do greatly appreciate it. Quokka is a cute Australian animal that kind of looks like if a rabbit and a rat crossbred. Interesting. It's a marsupial. Okay, so it's not a bird. It's a marsupial. All right, so I could play d5 and kind of open things up, but I feel like keeping the tension a little bit more, so let's play rook c8. You know, if this knight were over on b3, oftentimes you can run the a pawn as a pretty good plan. Let's play rook c8. I'll keep d5 in mind. It, it equalizes, but honestly, that move often just trades down pretty quickly. So let's try for something a little more ambitious. We're going to try for this. Knight c4, classic maneuver of the knight. 
into the C4 square. Botez Gambit declined. Oh, you're talking about Queen G5 from the other. Yeah, exactly. I didn't uh, <laughs> take my opponent up on that. Okay, so I'm pretty sure white sees my plan. They understand where I'm going with that knight. How are they going to react? Hmm. All right, let's go ahead and play this in. Plenty to take with the rook. I'm threatening knight takes e4 now. So how to deal with it? Queen d2, queen d3 maybe. Uh, if b3, I guess I can still play knight takes e4 because I'm hitting the queen. Okay, now I could do a sacrifice of the exchange on c3 if I wanted. That happens frequently in the Sicilian. I don't think this is a great circumstance to do it, though, because white has discoveries like bishop takes h6. Uh, it's on my radar, though, for sure. I could maybe go queen c7 and on knight d2 then sacrifice. I think that, in fact, gives me some pretty good compensation. Let's try that. You know, I'm not playing my best today already. I do feel in a slightly experimental mood. So let's go for it. I'm sacrificing one point of material because I got a minor piece in a pawn for the rook. But the argument is that white's going to have some weak pawns. There's plenty of pieces remaining on board. Typically, if you sacrifice an exchange in the middle game, or oftentimes in general, you want to keep pieces on board. If you can keep your remaining rook on board, by the way, that's usually a good thing when you sack an exchange. Defuser asks, that sack is typical when white long castles. No? Yeah, exactly. If white had long castled, it might be even better. Okay, I'm not going to take and repair white's pawns. We're going to reinforce the queen. Not exactly sure what I'm going to do next if I get a free move. It might be something like b5, maybe d5, although I still feel like I should hold off on d5 a little bit. Where is white going? Let's play b5. I feel like that's just a helpful move. White's really got to hustle now. d5, nah, I'm not feeling it. Let's play... Bishop f8. We're gonna, just going to step out of any knight f5 business. Okay, so white seems content to maneuver and wait. Probably they're just trying to play some quick moves. So we're going we're gonna to play like this. Now I've opened up bishop takes a3 as an idea. So here comes the trade. I feel like this pawn is a goner. Ooh, and that bishop is a goner. Here we go. Okay. Ah, take, take, check. Look at this. Off the rail, billiard shot. <laughs> Those are fun to play. Let's just advance now. Okay. Are you ready? Thank you for the game. Let's see what the engine thinks about that exchange sacrifice. Kind of curious. The engine's pretty stingy about material. It usually doesn't like stuff like that unless, <laughs> unless there's a lot of compensation coming. Oh, I could have played knight takes e4 here. I legitimately thought my rook was undefended. Yeah, I'm missing stuff today. This is a day to try to beat me, you guys. Seriously. I'm a little foggy. I've had a good weekend. <laughs> I, um... You know, haven't done anything too crazy, but I'm just a little rusty, I can feel. I did not even see that my rook was defended. I thought my rook was under attack, and then I had to move it or defend it. Knight takes e4 was just possible. In fairness, I think chat missed it as well. I don't want to assume anything about all you, all you players out there, but I think you collectively missed that too. <laughs> but yeah, knight takes e4 was possible here. So the engine is not very impressed, but 
even after this exchange sacrifice, yeah, it says equal. So to me, that says that the engine does acknowledge that Black has compensation here for the single point material deficit. Tafasca says, I saw that. It doesn't count unless you put it in chat, Tafasca. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the game. Are you ready? I'm trying to think what I might recommend. You know, there are some players who like this compact setup for white, but I, I don't think it's that promising. I think if you play this way, if you like this setup with, um, you know, more of a simplistic approach against the classical Sicilian, you might want to look at F3, Bishop E3, Queen D2 and castling queenside. That I think is a more ambitious setup. Uh, the most ambitious move of all, in my opinion, is Bishop G5. This is the Richter Rouser variation. So most of the top level games feature this move, and then Queen D2 and Castles Long. But if you want something a little more under control that still plays for an advantage, you can play like this. And I can just show how you know the play often goes like this. White castles this way. They can try to get a pawn storm, or they can simply play in the center. A lot of times knight d5 happens. So just a parting thought there a wavy all right let's go 1926 good luck magnus or nepo i gotta go with magnus absolutely for the upcoming world championship a wavy hello Don't think they're there. We're going to abort this one. We got to keep it moving. Oh, Zen Chess. Hello. Greetings to Zen Chess. I think I have played Zen Chess on other servers in the past, like the uh, the venerable Internet Chess Club, the ICC. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you search my channel, which is John Bartholomew on YouTube, if you search my channel, you will find... Pretty confident about this. You will find a, a standard game I played against Zen Chess. I would actually be curious what date that was. So if anyone uh, feels like doing that right now, that would be that would be kind of cool <laughs> to know. Let's play C6. We're going to go for the main line. Dan the Skyman says, six years ago, March 25th, 2015. Yeah, that sounds about right. I'm sure that is right. That, that's one cool thing about chess. You see people, you might recognize them only by their screen names, but you see them over the years. Some people are really into chess for a while, drift out of the game, but a lot of them come back. Zen chess, I think, has been around this whole time, but you know, it's, it's neat to play people that you played many years ago as well. Okay, Queen E2, I'm not sure about that move. Usually they play G4. G4 is the most ambitious move, but let's see how this turns out. Oh, nice Crooked Rooks. Yeah, that was probably a good three years ago now that I played Andras in that match. Now, if G4 in this position, I think I can play Knight takes E5. Very important. We're playing Bishop E4. If White goes A3... Taking the bishop is not yet going to be a threat because of the hanging rook on a1. So there's some some nuances here. Hello to nice move on YouTube. G4. Okay, I'm pretty sure I can take here. Let's do it. And if this capture sequence starts, takes, I'm going to take c4. And I think black's just going to win a pawn. I can take here, I can take on c3 first, and then take f5. Keep the structure together. Which way is better? I don't want to play this one, though, because then I lose here. I would only do that if I could go pick up the rook, but the knight defense. My instincts say bishop takes c3, although... Eh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do that. I mean, white's going to castle queenside more than likely and have some compensation. But I'm up a pawn. I have a compact position. As long as I watch the dark squares, I should be pretty good here. Maybe queen d5 at this point. We're going to eye up that pawn on a2. See where uh, my opponent goes. Mm. 
I guess they can play queen a4. Maybe that was not the most accurate. Queen b4, interesting. So giving this pawn, but I guess white's saying they're going to take on b7. If you want to think about chess as a, a dialogue, I think that's what, what white is saying to me. They're going to take b7. That could play castles at that stage. Looks interesting. Let's spice it up. You know, if I want to be super safe, I would just castle queen side here, but you guys want to see more action, so let's do this. Now, on queen takes b7, it might seem natural to give a check on a1, king d2, and then give another check. But remember, checks are the most overrated moves in chess. Of course, you have to end a game with a check to give mate, but... Checks are some of the easiest moves to justify, along with peace trades. But especially checks, amateurs overweight, they overemphasize checks. So I would actually not check, because white wants to bail this direction anyways. Why would I give them uh, the momentum to do that? Yeah, and Zen Chess actually does not even take on b7. So I could play knight e4 now, take away this square and threaten mate, but that's pretty easily dealt with. I think this is an interesting move. I think I should save this pawn now, probably. Although I'm not super confident. I mean, I could just play g6 too, right? Is there anything wrong with that? My dark squares are kind of Swiss cheesy. Let's play it. I'm still going to castle this way. Whoa, d5. Okay. That I was not expecting. It's an interesting move, though. I see the point. Oh, that might just be a good move, actually. Ooh, careful. Careful, John. I think I messed this up. We're going to find out. We're going to rumble now. This is going to get sharp. I have 17 seconds left. Could this be Zen Chess's day? I'm going to take with this pawn if he takes. He's probably going to take on d5, would be my guess. I think he kind of has to. No, he does not. Wow. I thought he had to take there. I'm happy, very happy to castle now. Very, very happy. Zen chess. I think that was your chance, man. Now, this is looking good. This is mate. Ooh, we got to check that. Zen Chess, I think D5 was an excellent decision. Didn't expect this. I didn't expect this opening of the position. Uh, but it makes sense. He just induced G6. My knight is loose. I'm going to guess that Zen Chess didn't like Rook takes D5 and me recapturing somehow and then threatening Queen A1 followed by this. But I don't know. I mean, let's take a quick peek. Take, I was going to take this way. My king's open, for one thing. I mean, there's checks. Well, let's just say this. I'm going to guess Zen Chess was not keen on this position. But those dark squares are awfully weak. But maybe I can start bailing this way if white begins checking. I don't know. All right, I was praising d5, but the computer's not impressed. Still, from a human standpoint, I like the d5 decision with the time situation in particular. But yeah, I think you got to play rook takes d5 if you're going to go for this. The initiative is king in time scrambles. And after this, the initiative was on my side. My king was pretty safe. And um, yeah, the queen and the knight coordinate pretty well in this position. Interesting. All right, so sharp Scandinavian. Yeah, g4 is met by knight takes e5. But uh, good job creating counterplay in kind of a creative way. Again, I don't mind d5. Don't care what the engine says. Human versus human with time ticking down. I think that's a good move. So thanks for the game, Zen Chess. Good to see you again. Yes, the Scandy man. The Scandy man cometh, Andy Fa, along with uh, Dr. Neichterstein. All right. Friendly dinosaur. Barney the friendly dinosaur. Shout out to... Uh, the friendly dinosaur I mentioned previously. Yeah, we played before. You guys can't see the record down here more than likely, but 
I mentioned that my dad's, my dad's name is Barney. <laughs> so that's what I think about when I see Friendly Dinosaur. I'm sure many of you guys have seen the Barney show when you were a kid. All right, let's play Bishop D3. Get ready to castle here. Thank you, Yanni Gogo, for tuning in from Greece. Hello, Chos. All right, all right. We're just building up here. Black's kind of crouching behind their pawn formation. Yeah. Barney might have been just a U.S.-based show. I would bet it was shown in other countries, but maybe it's more of a North American thing. Basically, he's a giant purple dinosaur. <laughs> John, how much coffee do you drink a day? Ooh, I mean, I probably have, uh, I probably have six to eight hundred milligrams of caffeine per day, all in coffee form. It's too much. I'm trying to cut cut down on that, but my intake has really increased over the past about a year and a half during the pandemic. I think the recommended dosage at max is like four hundred, so I'm definitely above that. I haven't experienced any outward side effects. I gotta say, like. Um, I actually do sleep fairly well, but I'm, I'm confident it's interfering with um, my sleep to some degree just because of the half-life, the quarter-life of caffeine. And I moved into a building. When I moved to this new building three months ago, it has a couple of awesome coffee machines, like really nice machines that can make whatever you want. <laughs> so that's been another uh, catalyst for drinking coffee. But I'm going to try to cut back on it. I just really like coffee. I like the ritual of coffee. I associate it with productivity. I feel like, you know, having one vice in your life, such as coffee, that's not incredibly destructive is okay. I mean, I'm not addicted to anything else as far as I know. Is it somewhat placebo? It could be. Yeah. I probably have a complex relationship with it. Am I addicted to chess? No, I'm not addicted to chess. Yeah. I've got long periods of time without chess, without, without playing chess, that is, without feeling um, anything missing. You know, chess is my profession, and I love the game, but I don't... That's one thing I actually really appreciate about chess, actually. I feel like chess is a very healthy cognitive pursuit. And a social pursuit as well, in a lot of ways. What should I do here? I feel like it's time for some sort of action. D5, maybe? I have an idea. We got to try to make use of the majority in the center. D5 takes, I'm going to play E5. And I'm going to try to take on D5 with the queen after driving out this knight. Okay, because now, look at this. Black lost coordination here. And I think that's going to cost them a piece. The knight on E4 is double attacked. Penguin says, RIP Barney. <laughs> Friendly dinosaur. Coffee does give you highs and lows. Yeah, is there anyone out there who's um, quit coffee or quit caffeine in general after like drinking it pretty regularly for a very long period of time, many years? And if so, what uh, effect has it had on you? Cutting it out from your life. I'd just be kind of curious. We're not going to miss that free queen. Thank you, Friendly Dinosaur, for the game. 
Uh, let's just take a quick look here. The middle game. So what I did in the middle game here, this might look like an odd plan playing A4, but this is like a form of the minority attack. That's a strategic plan where you're using fewer pawns to attack a greater number of enemy pawns. So my A pawn is isolated, but I can try to turn it into an annoying attacking unit, a strength even, by sending it up to A5, looking to puncture black structure. That was my plan here. I feel like this worked out okay, although I would bet that black was probably... Oh, wow, look at this. Yeah, really missing stuff. G3. I was wondering why this was a double question mark. Plus 6.6. .6. Again, chat. Chat, you're slipping. You're not noticing these traps of queens. How dare you? <laughs> well, actually, it's not a, quite a queen trap, but just the tactic out of nowhere. And the only safe square for the queen is here, and then e5 with the fork. Ooh. And it only works because black has just taken away the c7 square, and I guess even the b8 square to some extent with the rook c7 move. But that move went unnoticed. I think this is a case in a longer game. Probably I would have seen that. But it didn't occur to me that the queen, there could be a tactic based on the queen having a few squares here. Yeah, and here was the decisive stage of the game. I think you were doing pretty okay up till this point, Friendly Dinosaur, but yeah, the clock was ticking down. Looks like you got to retreat the knight elsewhere at this point. Knight e8, kind of a tough move to play. Knight to the back rank, but at least then only the rook is attacked. Yeah, that is a cool tactic, right? So thanks for the game-friendly dinosaur. Do you guys know if Lee Chess caps the number of challenges at 50 now? I think I asked this in a previous Lee Chess plays. I'm pretty sure they've changed that up. Good luck, Bartek, if you're there. Bartek, are you from Poland? That is like a Polish nickname, right? Doesn't say a flag. All right, we got some people with personal experience about caffeine. Interesting. Mark John says they do a coffee or caffeine detox every month or two. Oh, yeah, this is the Polish fan. Let's tell Bartek good luck. Jay Hubie says, I stopped drinking caffeine after 5 p.m. and sleep much better now. Mm -hmm. Bishop B5. Uh, what do I play against this? Pretty sure this is a variation. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go E6. Not quite sure. Yeah, I'm actually listening to an audio book right now on caffeine. So I'm um, thinking about this topic a lot lately. This allows white to play knight takes d5, but maybe white's not interested in that. I might want to take here just to clarify that, that situation. Uh, I don't know. Let's actually play a6. Let's see what the bishop's up to. Rye Bread Fungus says, Red wants that Seminole Indians used to drink a ritual caffeinated drink that was equal to 100 cups of coffee. Whoa. That's like some Voltaire level of coffee consumption. I think Voltaire was reputed to drink to up, up to 80 cups of coffee a day. <laughs> Who knows if that's accurate? Ooh, do I have a little tactic here? It's probably just equal at the end. But it looks cool. Actually, it kind of weakens some squares in White's position, so I think I'm going to go for it. Yeah, take 100 cups of coffee all at one time would be problematic. <laughs> it does take a very large dose of caffeine um, to be fatal, but <laughs> I don't think you want to mess with something like that. Do I ever go decaf? Yeah, that's been my strategy. I've been 
doing like um, every other cup of coffee being decaf. Oh, I see rye bread fun fungus. Uh huh. Hmm. All right. So bishop d4. Yeah, so the challenge is how to keep this deep on. I don't know that that's going to be realistic. I think this is just heading for equality, like dead equality. Trying to figure out some way I can keep a little bit of pressure. It's tough. I guess I'll take and play d4 in the hopes that I maybe get the bishop pair out of this. Even that I'm not so sure about, though. Yeah, maybe bishop takes c6 was even more annoying there. Because now I do have the bishop, so maybe I can do a little something with this. Let's play bishop e5. Maybe, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that can happen, crooked rooks. Talking about eye, eyelid fluttering due to caffeine. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's a signal for me that I've had too much. Let's go here. These bishops are both undefended, but they should be all right. You know, a move such as rook h5, I can play g6. Do have the bishop error. That's right, Krikor. Yeah, now I think I have some fairly significant pressure. I always can play bishop take c3 and double the pawns up if I want. Start attacking them. Considering do they, doing that here because my bishop is under fire, it's probably a good idea because if here... Well, I do gain tempo on the rook, but... Yeah, I think I'm going to play like this. We're just going to keep it real simple. But the time is the big thing. Vartex clock is ticking down rapidly. Here, maybe? Uh, let's just go back. Bishop g6. And now I'm going to go here. He's threatening f5, but I can hit his bishop and go after the pawn over here. Ooh, and I can even take this. Nice. There's a pin. Okay, let's go here. Make sure we don't blunder a back rank. Okay, Bartek, thanks for the game. Time caught up with, with us there at the end. Yeah, I think you were fine. And actually, I wonder if Bishop takes C6 right here. I like your... Uh, Zixal was commenting on this. Uh, I like how you played this. Just bishop e3, nice and calm. I think that's a great decision, in fact. Coordinating, recognizing that you don't have to rush to pick this pawn back up on d5. I wonder if you had played bishop take c6 here if I really have anything. Computer shows pretty much equal. It says either of those moves are okay. Bishop takes d4 even. But yeah, I was maybe having a slight preference for this move. Just to mess up my pawns. If takes, then you can take with the bishop or the rook. And I could try to take here, here, but with my bishop hanging, I don't know that we're looking at much more than just a, a wipeout and a trade to equality. So yeah, thanks for the game. Appreciate you watching. Hello, Alex Samo. Yeah, glad you were able to figure out how to challenge. Uh, Red Avalanche is next. Let's play e5 against the English. Maybe, depending upon what... Okay, white plays e3. I was going to say, I had a line in mind I was thinking about playing, but not getting a chance. Let's play... Mm, I'm not sure. I feel like d5 is cooperative. Tempted to play e4, but that pawn's overextended if we do that. Um... I don't know. I don't know the theory of this position. 
D5's got to be fine, but it seems kind of lame to me. Let's play bishop B... I don't know. Let's play bishop C5. This somewhat allows white to play D4 directly, but I'm going to take and then play bishop B4. Go for the pin. Yeah, the non-increment is tough. I agree. Barsaro. It can lead to difficult positions very quickly. How do you convert a strategical advantage, not a material advantage, in the middle game? Mm, broad question. You know, that's that's hard to give a succinct answer to. Because there's going to be a lot of lot of um, factors to consider there. And you might not even be converting it in the middle game. It might be taking it into an end game. I would say one word that comes to mind is patience. If you have a strategic advantage. Usually that means your advantage is of the semi-permanent variety. It's not going to go away after one move. So you see a lot of top-level games. A typical way in which they win is they accumulate small advantages. They maneuver, maneuver, maneuver. Maybe it's taking space. Maybe it's having superior mobility that they're just building on. And then eventually there's a tactic. That's a pretty common storyline. But not the only one. All right, I'm going to try to go here. This is my point with this maneuver. I'm actually allowing white, encouraging white to advance with the pawns, but I want bishop g6 with the tempo on the queen. Maybe knight f4 would have been better there for white, but we shall see. Okay, interesting. I mean, this probably doesn't do much, right? Because knight here is coming. I gotta be a little bit careful because white is ahead of me in the uh, pawn storm department. K Buckby says the real challenge is to keep those advantages. Such accuracy required to not make a slight inaccuracy and ending up with a quality. Yeah, and you know, there's certain players throughout chess history who are so good at that. Uh, Magnus, Karpov, Kramnik, Capablanca, Petrosian, Smyslov. I mean, pretty much every world champion was really good at that. But there are certain players who, yeah, really stand out. I don't know. I'm under some pressure here. I'm going to try to... Let's try to lock it down for one thing. I'm, I'm really anticipating Knight... Doesn't play it still. I'm trying to make something work here, but it's not easy. And I need to hurry. Red Avalanche is putting the pressure on me on the clock, too. Try to go to G4 if White steps up with the Knight. All right. Okay, let's, let's look to Storm. I got to create some counterplay myself. I'm very cramped here. Very cramped. Oh boy, this could get nasty. Please let me play G6. <laughs> okay, they allow me to do it. I might still be in trouble though. I don't know. I got to watch this pretty carefully. But at least now the files are closed. And White's maybe contemplating some sacrifices. Ooh, knight takes g6, a big threat. I'm going to try to do this. We're going to counterattack as best we can. Time is going to be a huge factor here. This could be played. I can't even really prevent it, so. Ooh, finally a break. Knight e5. All right, all right. We can still try this. He's gonna. I think I should ignore that. We're not gonna take. We're not gonna mess around with that. Maybe I could somehow survive if that happened, but let's simplify. Whew, we got the queens off the board. Very important. 
Yeah, time scramble. White's falling apart, but valiantly played. I bet I was probably minus six or so, or plus six in my opponent's favor at some point. It was not looking good roundabout here. I'm existing on the back two or three ranks. I was feeling claustrophobic at this point. Yeah, look at this. Plus nine if white plays G6. G6. G6 was uh, a thematic move here because you see how it creates a maximum number of open lines. It guarantees open lines. It is a pawn sacrifice. You know, I probably would have played knight takes f6. But white can pry open the lines towards my king. That's a pawn you should be very willing to sacrifice. And the engine is so confident in white's attacking prospects, it says I'm down almost the equivalent of two rooks or more than a queen even. That's how big of an attack this is. Everything lining up. So, yeah, I think that did me a favor. Uh allowing me to play pawn g6. And even though white's probably still doing well around here, stuff like this, at least things are now, there's a few more roadblocks for white. And I was able to create just enough counterplay to ultimately save the game. Hmm. I don't know the theory in this position. I really... It's strange that I got into such an unfamiliar position. I mean, knight ge2, it's kind of interesting to look at the database. You guys can't even see this. It's blocked by my webcam. So on Lee Chess, there's a little book icon. Again, it's blocked by my webcam, but you can click that when you're analyzing a game and it will pull up a database and you can look at the Masters database or the Lee Chess database, which is massive. Millions and millions of games. But um, you can see the percentage breakdown of various lines when you're analyzing. And we can see, you know, there are moves that are more popular here. Uh, Knight GE2 has only been played. There we go. Now you can see it in nine master games. But I think it's not a bad move. I was hesitant to do this because I didn't want white to be able to recycle their knight to c3 at the end. But looks like black scores okay in this line. So, okay. Great game, the, the red avalanche. Had me under pressure. Definitely the best game of the day. From a viewer. Doe. Let's go, Doe. Good luck. I almost played the exchange variation. Okay, now I'm going to take, because against g6, I do think it, the best thing to do is to take. This is the Schlechter Slav. Pretty solid line for black. It's a little, some people consider it unambitious for black, but I think it's you know, generally pretty play, playable. I think here you want to maneuver for this square. I think that's the thing to do. And my opponent is inviting me in. How kind of my opponent. Kind of looking at bishop d6 stuff. Bishop b1 would be my default move here. Let's go bishop b1. We'll just save the bishop and we'll defend a2. Often you don't greatly have to worry about knight jumps like that. They can do more harm than good. So if I go here, here, is there anything there? I mean, knight here almost traps their queen. But they have queen b6. Yeah, I don't see a way around the queen b6 issue. Let's just increase the pressure. Let's just jump up. How much time do the top players need to spend on opening prep? As far as I understand, they spend the vast majority of their time on openings. There was an interview with someone where I think they said, I don't remember the exact percentage, but I think it was on the order of 80 to 90% of the time they spend on chess study is on openings. Which, uh, to me, makes perfect sense. That's where they're really trying to gain an edge. Don't know. I don't know why I'm so hesitant in this position. It's a good position, but I'm just not quite sure how to play it. Let's just take this way for starters. 
we'll put the knight in here. Seems annoying. Okay, and then black blunders. This whole time, I'm kind of thinking black's got to play queen b6 if I ever do this. But they blundered queen e8. Thank you, Floyd Akash, for the five months on the, the Twitch channel, the Lee Chess Twitch channel. Thank you very much for supporting. Yeah, big shout out to Lee Chess, as usual. Fantastic site to play on. It's always a pleasure. Uh, Lee Chess is a free open source site. It will always be free. And it's just a, been a pleasure to use it over the years. It's got a great uh, network of volunteers, moderators, supporters. You can become a patron if you want. So we are very appreciative of Lee Chess. Shout out to the mods. No joke, Chess is usually the mod who's in here. Uh, I think No Joke said he was going to be busy today. But um, yeah, shout out to all the mods on Lee Chess. I'm somehow in a cramped position. I don't like this. I got to reorganize a little bit. Let's go after this pawn. I won the exchange, but somehow I ended up very cramped. Yeah, the Lee Chess study feature is phenomenal. Then the database, it's so cool to have that. Here we go. Pressure. Build the pressure. Maybe bishop e4 if, if black defends here or here. Mm. Okay, we get to advance. What's the point here, I suppose? All right, all right, but we can continue jumping. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's go king h1 just to get off of the same line. Maybe I can play f4. Let's push. Time is not exactly on my side, but it's a big advantage. I should be able to make something of it. Open exchange in a pawn. Hey, this is tough to break down, though, because Black's got a pretty good fortress. Hard to break down the dark squares, but they blundered a tactic to get this in. All right, now we just got to beat the clock. It's often the thing. Don't drop the rook. This is defended. We're just going to try to mate, set up a mating net. All right. Let's just park this guy here. We're going to trade off. And something has to promote. I have auto queen on. That's good. All right. Checkmate. Thanks for the game, Doe. Yeah, I thought you had to play queen b6 when I jumped the knight into c6. I think that's probably the only move to avoid losing material. I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to play there. Looks a little bit better for white, but... Oh yeah, you got to do... You got to go for the dirty flag. <laughs> Why not? 3 plus 0? Yeah, thanks for the game. Ah, Kimia Asherly... Good to see someone who's active in the chat. I saw you in the Lee Chess chat. Good luck. Let's play a Karocon. Jinx. Are we going to see a hillbilly attack? Bishop b3? I think that's the hillbilly proper. No. White plays. Bishop back to d3. Now, I'm going to try to advance my pawns on you, Kimya. Be careful. These are aggressive. You can get out of this, but you do have to be careful. We're going to break the pin. Ooh, I think white had to play bishop b5 there. That was the magic move. It's castle. 
By the way, did any of you in the chat get to play against Shakriar Mamadyarov when he did Lee Chess plays a few weeks ago? I think that was so cool that Lee Chess was able to arrange that. K. Buckby says they tried. Leonard says, nope, sadly not. And, and I think Mamadyarov lost a couple games, as far as I understand. So he didn't just mow everyone over. The chat showed up. <laughs> oh, yeah? Flutterkash? So he's done it multiple times. That's cool. That's really cool. I thought it was a one-off thing, but that's great to know. Did you guys see uh, Mama Diarov trap Magnus in the opening today in the very first game of their match? I just saw some chatter about it on Twitter. Uh, didn't actually get to see the game in detail myself. Now, don't fall asleep at the wheel here, John. Queen takes g7 is a threat. So let's go knight h5. Let's deal with that by attacking the queen and defending. Is this queen almost trapped? I control all of these squares. There's only one square for the queen to go to, and then I can fork here. Very unusual. Thank you, Alex, for TMM, for being a first-time chatter. Uh, thank you to Vihan Chess with, for subbing with Twitch Prime, especially. Thank you for supporting the channel. Yeah. Lee Chess really appreciates the subscriptions. I don't know for sure how it works, but um, I believe the subscription revenue is probably just treated as a donation, just like uh, the donations they get from patrons to go to their server expenses, uh, basic costs of running the site. Oh, thank you, Bardzo. We got another Polish viewer. Awesome. You guys are great. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're having a good evening. Yeah, and just a reminder, if you're out there with uh, Amazon Prime, if you use Amazon Prime, you have a free subscription per month to any Twitch channel that you want. It doesn't cost you anything. All you have to do is click subscribe and then go to the option for use my Amazon Prime. And you can allocate that to any streamer you want. And as a Twitch streamer myself, I'm, you know, fully confident in saying that virtually every streamer is going to greatly appreciate if you use your Twitch Prime on their channel. It always feels kind of cool because you just, you only get one per month. Uh, so do make sure that you use that if you haven't already. Do I ever do viewer game analysis? You know, I don't really do that. Um... Definitely not on Lee Chess plays, other than just kind of looking at a few things after the fact. Long term on my own channel, I would like to implement something like that. I think that would be pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I don't currently do that in terms of like dedicated videos for analysis. So thanks for the game, Kimya. Yeah, so Kimya, if you're watching, I would recommend not playing Bishop C4 on move two. I do think you should play D4. And look at that. We got a couple Twitch Primes uh, rolling in here from EarlCat78 and also Klypnos with the Prime. Thank you to, to both of you for using that. Really, really appreciate it. Lee Chess appreciates it. Again, everything goes to Lee Chess. Uh, so, no, it doesn't directly benefit me. But, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, a way to support Lee Chess. Which benefits us all. <laughs> so yeah, Kimia, if you're playing bishop c4, it's more of like a kind of a gambity continuation. White can go bishop b3 here. I'll show this. Takes and then queen h5. You can see there's some games here, but even this can't really be recommended, although Magnus did win a game with it against Tomaszewski in 2015. <laughs> uh, as played, you see how I got all this pawn play in the center. You still had a way out, though. If you had played bishop b5 check, you could avoid losing a piece to the pin. Or to the fork, I should say. 
And you could also do it here. You have to play bishop b5 if you want to avoid going down a piece. Thanks for the game. Okay, GG Lamar. Let's do this. Let's play. I'm feeling grabby. <laughs> I don't know why. Do we have any grab aficionados? One of the worst two moves in chess that you can open with as white. G4 and F3, I believe, are the worst moves. Let's continue with the flank strategy. Hello, Johnny. Yeah, you can join the queue for sure. I am choosing cha challenges at random. Spit on my microphone. It's kind of gross. Sorry. Okay, so I'm throwing the pawns down the board here, seeing what happens. Maybe g5, g6. Black's developing kind of hesitantly. You know, they're unsure of what I'm doing here, so they're kind of turtling up in the center. <laughs> Let's keep going. Why not? Let's play g5. Let's play g6. Okay, they were ready for that. They played f6 right away, but it's starting to look kind of cramped on their king side. But that's solid. I can't, I can't dispute the fact that that's a solid move. Okay, I think GG is going to castle on the queen side. So you know what that means. We got we to gotta try to give GG problems with the queen side pawns now advancing against black. <laughs> I feel as if I'm playing moves that like Stockfish level one or two bot on, on Lee Chess would play. Like, look at my setup. <laughs> it's just, if you play Stockfish one or two, it does random stuff, especially with its pawns. And um, a lot of times it's queen as well in the opening. <laughs> I feel like I'm playing bad. But here we go. We're using more pawns. I mean, I kind of like my position. B5. This is the, the idea. Maybe I'll prep it. Maybe I'll go knight f3, knight d4. Something like that first. Yeah, let's just try to get a little more development in. Black's still solid. I mean, they're facing these two pawns. This is a good idea. You know, play in the center. In general, that's what you want to think about doing. B5, is it time for B5? But I don't, I don't like my follow-up options. I think I need to castle. These pawns might be, might be goners. You know? But I need to get coordinated. I need to protect my king. See if I can push all my pawns. That's going to be tough now because these ones are hard to get out of the starting blocks. But I get b5 in with a couple attacks there. I think bishop g4 was a good move for black. Trying to go after the king side pawns. Oh, Fletikosh. Thank you for gifting that sub to me. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Floyd. That makes four gift subs on the Lee Chess channel for Floyd. I think I'm currently using my prime on Daniel Narditsky's channel. My buddy, Danya. Watch out for a queen takes a6 in the future. This bishop is lurking. Watch it. Watch it, watch it. It would be kind of a boss move to pre-move it, but I'm not that confident. Oh, man. I'm feeling something like this coming now, too. This is extremely claustrophobic around that king. Okay, now taking the queen is a threat. Let's be clear. It is a threat. What should I play here? 
I don't know that I have anything artistic. I mean, this would be kind of cool, but totally unnecessary. I'm just going to take with the queen. We'll save the queen. Now I'm going to keep it on, though, and try to attack the black king. Again, trading would be fine. Normally, trading is going to be a pretty productive thing. But I really want a knight b6 operation to land. That is a big-time threat here. GG could move the queen now somewhere away from the defense of the b6 square. Okay, but yeah, they could have allowed knight b6 smothered mate is my point. I'm so close to cool checkmates. Stuff like trying to set up queen takes a7. Let's go here. Further pressure. This is, this is a nightmare to play. Okay, finally I get this move in. It's not a cool checkmate, but, you know, still pretty cool. The bishop's going to do the, the mating task. All right, thanks to the game, GG. Yeah, I played in real experimental style there. You were a little hesitant. You know, I think you could take more of the center. When your opponent's playing g4, bishop g2, h4... I think you should get two pawns up there on the fifth rank rather than one. Although I understand this setup, blocking the bishop, that's okay, but probably your e-pawn does deserve to come up to e5. Oh, wow, look at Pedersen Kid gifting 10 subs to the channel. My, oh my, the Pedersen Kid. Thank you very much for that. Cheers, buddy. Also a big-time supporter of my channel as well. Excellent, excellent. How many subs does Leech us up to? Let's see. 75 subs. Awesome. And a large portion of those just came because of Pedersen Kit. Thank you very much. Appreciate you watching today. Hope you're well. Let's take a brief look at the analysis here. Curious what the eval was like. Yeah, you know, I think GG probably around here. You're looking pretty good. Maybe... Hmm, King B8 is actually not bad, according to the engine. I thought Bishop G4 in this position. Although B5 is coming, admittedly. Hmm. Okay, so it doesn't want you to take. It says Queen C5 instead. I could see that, that Bishop being a useful defender of your king and slowing my attack down a little bit because my queen remains on the back rank and I now have to defend the knight a couple times. But yeah, thank you for the game. My average centipon loss actually wasn't terrible that game. It was 28. All right. You don't stream under your account anymore, ass PGX? No, I do. Yeah, but I just do Lee Chess plays typically every Sunday. But yes, I do stream under my own account. Ooh, the Latvian Gambit. The Latvian. Let's see what I remember about this. Not a whole lot. You know who hates the Latvian Gambit? Who knows which streamer detests the Latvian Gambit? It's a, a long-running joke for them on their channel. Well, I don't even think it's a joke. They take it very seriously. This streamer gets kind of offended when people play it against them. And I will say, this is not a new wave streamer. This streamer has been around for a long time. Yes, very good, R. Kansas. Yes, Chess Explained. Chess Explained, a.k.a. Christoph Selecki. He has very strong words against the, the Latvian Gambit. <laughs> Morphe. <laughs> okay. We've got some weird night action going on here. I don't know. I was thinking about moving my knight here, but now I'm not so sure. Let's just go here. I'm threatening bishop takes, and then this is a problem. I'll try to prove that black's queen being kind of distant from the, the queen side is a problem. Also, there's this issue. Okay, so if I take now, 
They kind of got to take my knight, and then I can check at minimum. Yeah, I think checking is pretty promising. Might not even take that pawn on d5. Kind of depends. Could take now. There's always this issue, but I could take and try to circle back for the piece. But I mean, I like my position enough. I'm just going to go queen e2. Postpone a decision. Ah, maybe I should have captured first. We'll postpone a decision for now. Dano says he hates all kind of gambits. Well, Christoph probably says that like the standard gambits are fine. I would bet, you know, the Marshall gambit, for instance, he's totally okay with. But yeah, I could see him being somewhat skeptical of gambits. He's a very principled player. Great theoretician. Uh, Emperor says, hey, John, do you expect people to stop watching the stream when they play you? Totally up to you. I would say if you want to treat it as a learning experience, then yes, you should stop the stream. But if you're just playing for fun and you want to hear my commentary with a slight delay, then of course I wouldn't fault you at all for uh, keeping my commentary on. I'm just going to try to castle this way. We're going to bring that king to the queen side. I don't know, though. I feel like I'm letting black off the hook here. Black can still castle on uh, king side. Let's try to go after this pawn. Not really sure how successful this is. Yeah, I, I should have played bishop takes d7 check earlier. That would have been much more promising. John, do you have any openings you don't like playing against? And then someone said, nice try. <laughs> you know, I've always felt some of the openings that are most difficult to play against are your own openings. You know, lines that you play like with uh, the opposite color. So do feel free to play Scandinavian against me. I might struggle. <laughs> All right, I want a pawn. It's looking up. All right, now let's play h3. Let's stop any knight g4 incursion. Although I'm up a pawn, I'm a long ways away from winning this game. There's a lot of play left here. Lots of play. I'm thinking g4, g5 after this might be a plan. Just to try to introduce this as a threat, and you know, this could be potentially shaky for black in the future. Maybe not right now, but down the road. I don't know, though. My king is not the safest uh, king ever. But I think this one's going to be decided on the clock, if I were to guess. Ooh, that's a piece, though. I caught a break there. They took their eye off the ball. They were trying to storm me. That is a piece. Let's go here now look for this. Or this. Ooh, which way do I take? I see a potential mating net, folks. Hold up. We get to drop it in. There we go. Pawn takes, pawn takes. That's mate. Well, queen h2 is the only move here. Black could have taken with the rook, but they would have been down too much material and facing an attack. That's a, a good little pattern to know, where a knight can drop into that square with the queen covering uh, g8, or I guess it could be a bishop in some cases, and a rook ready to unleash down the file. Thanks for the game, Paul. Yeah, I think you were doing all right in the Latvian there. Um, later on in the game in particular. I think the opening looks kind of sketchy. I, again, I don't really know the theory so well here. But just on sight, I got to believe this is very good for white. Yeah, this is plus two and a half or three. That said, the engine's not a huge fan of knight d5. Queen f7 does seem correct. I know in the Latvian, a lot of times the queen does come back to this square. That hits the knight and also defends here. 
That is a fun pattern, right, Grace Sensei? So yeah, thanks for the game, Paul. Who do we got next? Howell, good luck. David Howell Zero. Just kidding. Your name's probably not David. <laughs> All right, let's play a Pierce. We've been dabbling in different openings. John, how strong would you say your blindfold play is relative to your normal play? Mm. At long time controls, that would be interesting to know. Just ballparking, I would say probably 300 points lower. 400 maybe. And I might be able to make that up if I really practice blindfold. I'm sure that gap would narrow a little bit, but yeah, it's... For sure, uh, a detriment to my game. Let's counter Fianchetto against Howell. Maybe threatening Knight takes e4. No rating points on a win is kind of rough. Yeah, it can be. Tempted, tempted, tempted to do this. Is it good? It seems kind of greedy, but I don't see anything wrong with it, so I'm going to do it. Thank you, uh, Jorge Jimenez, by the way, on YouTube. Haven't looked at YouTube a little bit. Uh, thank you, Zoltan, as well, by the way. Hello, Matt Thompson. Uh, Nicolas Filon likes the, the hillbilly attack. We were talking about that earlier in the Caracon. Ooh, this is a piece. Yeah, Daniel's incredible at blindfolded. I caught part of his stream the other day. He was playing on his blindfold account on chess.com, and he was 2,900 on his blindfold account. <laughs> that's higher than I've ever been on my regular account. <laughs> I think that's true for 99.9% .9 of players. 99.9%. Nine nine five probably percent of players. You guys have probably seen the videos on YouTube of various players playing blindfolded. Like um, Magnus has done a couple blindfold exhibitions. I think there's one where he played ten people. It might even be in that documentary, Magnus. Are all good players capable of blindfolded play? Yeah, I would say universally all very strong players are. Most masters I know can play blindfold pretty comfortably, a single game that is. So I would say to, I would venture that, yeah, most every GM, most every IM is going to be pretty good playing blindfolded. Um, probably lower, you're going to get, you know, mixed mixed results. Some masters are going to be good blindfolded. Um, others, maybe not so much. Uh, Nature says, I have noticed a lot of uh, GMs look away from the board when really thinking about a position. Yeah, that is a habit that a lot of players have. I think sometimes that's done because they do see things more clearly when they're not looking at the board. I think some of them just do it purely because um, they've seen other people do it too, though. <laughs> I actually think that's a thing. It's kind of like saying, but okay, in chess. But okay. They've heard a lot of players say that, <laughs> so they start mimicking them. But kind of like um, I'm doing right now, just looking away, trying to formulate my thoughts, it's the same type of thing going on in, in chess when you're looking away from the board. 
Sure thing, Howell. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for the game. It's another one of these where I feel like someone should not have an aversion to playing D4 early on. If, if your opponent's sitting back, putting pawns on the 6th rank, go ahead and play D4. Maybe you have a setup that you're keen to play, but this morphs into more of a, a pretty good Sicilian for black, I think. But yeah, thanks for the game. All right. Bebe Kof. Good luck. Scandy time? All right. I can go with Scandy. We've already had a Scandy game or two, but why not? Let's make it another one. You guys know what the worst move is in this position, right? No one's played it against me yet. I'm still waiting for that three-move checkmate. All my years of playing the Scandy. No one's ever played King E2. Actually, maybe one person did. It might be uh, like a, a plausible mouse slip if someone's playing fast like in a bullet game. Maybe I did have one game. Okay, we're going to put the knight on c6 without the pawn coming up here. White's developing a little hesitantly, so I think I can be more bold. Hello, Mitch, by the way, on YouTube. Thank you, Brett, by the way. Just love watching your videos. Thank you. All right, let's see where this knight's going to go. Don't blunder knight g5, Bebikov. Watch the long-range moves. Don't do it. You got to retreat. Knight h2 or knight e1. I don't, I know. There you go. Good. Good, good, good. That shows good board awareness because I'm telling you, a lot of players at this rating range, they would have blundered that. All right. Another test here. Let's see if Bebikov finds the best move. I think the best, good, once again, finds a good move here. That blocks me. Now, if pawn takes en passant, they got to take with the knight, right? I'm going to give a check here. I'm tempted to take en passant in the hope that they don't take with the knight, but you got to give your opponent credit for the best move. I think they would take with uh, the knight. Oh, yeah, en passant is obligatory. I know I'm going to disappoint some of you because I didn't play that. I do apologize. All right, I'm going to play caveman style. We're going to try to go knight h5. Another instance of trying to get, you know, that same pattern I had in the other game. I'm going to try to engineer this somehow with the knight coming into g4. And looking to get the rook involved as well. So queen, knight, and rook working together to create threats. It's that magic... Three pieces involved in the attack. That's often a good amount of pieces. Good minimum number of pieces for a potentially strong attack. I can play bishop g4 here. It's an interesting move. Ah, bishop g4 I think actually wins a piece. Ah, uh, not quite, but it's challenging, so let's do it. What Rush album do you recommend listening to after moving pictures? You know, people don't really listen to albums anymore, but I always like Grace Under Pressure. Oh, I don't know what that move is about. Grace Under Pressure is a more experimental album for Rush, but I really like it. It has a nice flow to it. Super relaxing. I listened to it when I was in Iceland several years ago. I think after Bishop G4, uh, Knight Takes D6 is the move here. Pawn takes d6, then bishop e2, because my idea was actually, if bishop e2 here, I was going to play queen takes b5, which is kind of a funny way to win a piece like this. <laughs> yeah, knight takes d6, although the, the engine is not liking white's position. Because the basic problem here for white is they can never take 
and allow this H file to get levered open. Thank you, Kimia. See you later. So this looks a little caveman style, but I think it's a pretty good attack for black once I get H5 in. Yeah, I think H4. Maybe it was a mouse slip, or they meant to put the pawn back. But interesting that we've seen that same pattern in two different games, with the queen guarding the square, or G8 in the other game, and a piece, a minor piece, trying to get sacrificed. I guess it was on G6, which would be the equivalent of G3 here. A minor piece being offered to try to get the rook involved down the file, like this. Once again, another good pattern to know. Okay, Tambadio, good luck. Thanks to everyone for tuning in for today. We're into our last about 15, 20 minutes or so. It's been a lot of fun. This, this time always flies by. Um, really enjoy playing these games with you, hanging out, chatting. Let's play h6. John, are you not a fan of the queen d6 line? Uh, I assume you mean the queen d6 scandy. I have not really played it. I consider it to be the most complicated of the queen takes lines in the Scandinavian. I think it's also quite good for what it's worth in terms of theoretical value. But yeah, I, I generally have preferred other lines. Mm, let's play b6. Could also go directly for e5, but we'll go b6. Yeah, likewise, acute. Yeah, you can probably expect that in the coming months, Kansas. I know that's a wide time frame. But um, yeah, I think my schedule has calmed down a little bit. I'll get back to some YouTube in the, in the future. What do I think of the upcoming World Championship? You know, I um, don't have any opinions that differ greatly from what uh, the odds say. I think Magnus is a pretty... Pretty strong favorite, you know, maybe a 65% chance. Uh, close to a 2-1 to one favorite, I'd say. Is this opening the Tory? No, although the bishop landed on g5, this was a Nimzo Indian. And white played, I think this is called the Leningrad variation. I don't think it's that great for white. Because white has these damaged pawns. Now I can win a pawn. I put it on the back burner for now, Royal Fork. Yeah, I have not been working on that course actively lately. Let's go A5. We'll pre-move rook takes a8, just in case white captures. <laughs> I don't know why white would, but you never know. It's a free pre-move. <laughs> Gets canceled if they don't play it. Okay. I might go a4 here and then try to activate the rook up this way. This is an interesting little idea. Now, white can't forget about this rook in the corner, so they can't play their rook like up the board or something to try to double. They could maybe go to d4, but that looks a little sketchy. Maybe he's pre-moving rook takes a1. He might. Very possible. Thank you, P. Bulkus, for the raid. Appreciate it. We're into the home stretch of this stream, but um, we will surely be raiding someone else. Um, let's double up the rooks. I'll pre-move rook takes a8 again. Why not? <laughs> now, a plausible way for me to blunder would be playing rook takes b5 next and then allowing queen takes a8 with check in between move. That's right, Adam, looking at the YouTube chat again. Yeah, I've been streaming on Twitch. 
Thank you, Matt Prout, by the way. Matt Prout getting into chess during the pandemic. Great to see. Is D5 a good move here? I think it's plausible. Let's play it for confusion value with my opponent very low on the clock. Idea pawn takes, I take the rook on b5. There you go. Deflection. d6, I can go here. Or, no, we're not going to get fancy. Hmm. Hmm. I'm still not landing my desired pre-moves. <laughs> All right. Yeah, thank you for the game, Tambadillo. Yeah, I think uh, this variation, not the greatest, although that is a pin. I think with this capture sequence, basically black ends up in a situation that's long-term slightly favorable for black. Because white has doubled pawns, and these pawns are not easy to offload in trade. So, yeah, I, I see people play this every once in a while, but I think the results do favor black pretty, pretty well here. Yeah, you can kind of see the breakdown. If white plays this line, they do usually retreat the bishop to h4. Yeah, this looks like it scores pretty well for black. Thank you for the game. We're going to get in two or three more games here. Hello, no region chess giant. Yeah, I've been in this new place about three months now. Okay, what have I not played yet? Let's play Alakine's defense. Greetings, Malcolm, by the way. Malcolm Tucker, regular viewer of the channel. Appreciate it. Ooh, the four pawns attack. Let's do this. Three plus zero months, yes. <laughs> Greetings, Estes, by the way. The four pawns attack. Pretty principled line, you know? White gaining all this space. I have a feeling I'm supposed to play F6 here. I'm going to do it. Not 100% sure, but I remember playing this line myself one time as white in a blitz game against a pretty good opponent. And they played F6 somewhere in this line, and I remember having a really hard time coming up with anything good. So I'm going to try to use that strategy against my opponent. Kind of like what I was talking about earlier, trying to flip the script, if you will, and play something unpleasant that you have found to be, t to be difficult from the other side in the past. White's knight is under attack. Ooh, white doesn't move it. Okay, what's going on here? So I could take on h4, but my structure is going to be a little wrecked. However, I will be up two pawns. And two pawns, even though they're both double isolated. That's hard to turn down. Other moves here, knight a5, that would hit this. Knight d4 maybe, looks kind of dynamic. No, I think it's I think it's kind of between knight a5 and bishop takes h4. I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards knight a5 now. Knight a5 takes f5, pawn takes c5. Let's try it. Why not? Let's do it. Looks more interesting than playing that position with two sets of double pawns, double isolated pawns, that is. Didn't want to play e takes d5 because the knight takes f5, by the way. Oh, well, thank you, Rodoc. I really appreciate you saying that. I know there are other streamers who Definitely surpassed me in pure entertainment content. <laughs> but I try to bring a good balance, leaning more towards the educational side of things since I am a chess teacher. And that's always been my, my goal on the channel and in my streams to educate people as much as possible. 
Even if I can get someone to blunder a little bit less, that is a win. Um, B3 is a solid move. I think that's a good decision by my opponent. Maybe E4 here. I got to watch C5 a little bit. C5 is still kind of unpleasant. Maybe I go back now? No, that traps the knight. If I were an Alakine's defense player, how would I play this position? I don't know. Let's play pawn c5 myself. I don't, I'm really not sure. You like the, the educational focus, Sebastian? Cool. Good to hear that. Yeah, I think there's a, there can be a nice blend of both. Danya's also, yeah, very good at that, for sure. Danya is amazing. I think he really wants to play d6, but I think I can take with the knight. Now I'm definitely going to put the knight here. Knights make excellent blockaders of protected past pawns. Remember that? So we're going to put that pawn there, put a stop to any shenanigans. And now I think I'm going to run these pawns in the middle. I'm liking the look of that. Threatening a fork. Push the, bishop, the bishops around a little bit. Make white retreat, like bishop e1 or something, or move the queen. We got to watch the time, though. This is getting down to the wire. Hello, 1M. Thank you for chatting for the first time. Also, 2 mats. All right, all right. Here, maybe? This is tricky. I don't think this pawn can be captured, though. That's my premise. Yep. All right, let's give it a check. Now we're just going to develop and defend. I'm liking this position. Everything's coming together here. This knight's still kind of off sides, but it's safe at least. Bishop's awesome. Pawns are great. We're up a pawn. Ooh, and white is taking drastic action, but... This is too much. This is far too much. Flurry of captures. Oh, Malcolm. Malcolm was about to get mated. Yeah, thank you for the game. Interesting one. Alakine's defense. Any of you guys Alakine players? Thank you, uh, Papa Sionatis, for the raid. Appreciate it. Raiding with 23 viewers. We just got another raid, too. I did mention I'm on the tail end of this stream. This is a two-hour stream. Lee Chess plays where I play viewers in 3 plus 0. Uh, but we have an exciting game coming up because it's tradition that the final game of the stream, each time I do it, I play the Bong Cloud opening, which is one of the worst openings you can possibly play in chess. And I play with a certain piece style that I can only show you to explain. Yeah, they were, weren't they, Defuser? Okay, a lot of marks here that <laughs> you generally don't like to see, because that means mistakes were probably made. All right, one second. I just got to put in my food order. And then we're going get, to get going with um, the final game of the day. Who's going to be the lucky recipient? All right, food order going in. And then it's Bong Cloud horsey time. Let's do this, shall we? Oh, wait, wait. Wait for it. You know what we got to do first. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking. Let's go. Mustafa, you're up. You're the recipient of E5, King, E7. I hope you take me down. Good luck. I hope you're there. Mustafa, my man. Knock, knock. Buster Rogers says, that's my cue, bye. Yeah, some people, they can't, they can't bear to stick around for this game. <laughs> uh, I got my, my mouse over the X. I'm sorry, Mustafa. 
We got to go to someone else. Okay, Internet Pilgrim. My hands are not on the mouse. I can't cancel it. Whatever Internet Pilgrim decides to throw at me, I must abide by. There we go. Now we can play. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay, closing it up. Always retreat. Note, bishop g4 can be met by pawn f3 or knight f3. I'd probably play pawn f3. I'm thinking maybe pawn storm on the king side. Ooh, f6. Very defensive move from Internet Pilgrim. Let's play f4. By the way, if anyone complains about the set, we're going to switch to this set. Or, oh wait, this one. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. You guys can complain if you want. King takes f3, let's go. <laughs> King is an attacking piece. We got the two bishops. Looking for this. Maybe f5, g4. I mean, plausible, right? King leading the charge over on the king's side. John, which game do you call as your best game in all of your career? Besides this one, I'm playing against Internet Pilgrim. <laughs> um, well, my most memorable game is a game I played against uh, Grandmaster Alex Shabalov. It was at the Foxwoods Open in Massachusetts in the U.S. In 2003, I was 16 years old. He was the reigning U.S. champion, and I was playing him in the first round of this big tournament, and I won. And it was especially memorable for me because, yeah, he was in great form at that time. He was over 2,600. Uh, let's take, should I take this way? I think so. Even though the king is open, I think we're going to shift to this diagonal. We're going to try to attack down that diagonal. Right? Get the bishop lined up. Uh, Pocky627 says, this is hard to watch. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello, Adam, by the way. Chess HQ is asking if I had any upcoming tournaments. No, none. Um, thinking about the U.S. Masters, though, maybe. It's around Thanksgiving. So later in November. K. Buckby says, my memorable moment was being on the bullet tournament podium with John in the back. Oh, thank you, K. Buckby. You're so kind. Let's take with the bishop. Internet Pilgrim is opening lines, but I'm happy to have won that pawn, I think. Ooh, they really are trying to open lines. Queen F4, I think, is on the menu here. But I have Queen F3. Remember, a check itself is not necessarily a good move. Ooh, take now? Take or knight c4? I think probably takes. Takes is looking quite juicy. Can take with a queen check. I mean, that's not a slam dunk. I can get the rook involved, perhaps, at that point. That's also not a guarantee, though. Let's see. Here, here. I'd like to lift the rook. Right? Here. But then there's c4 for my opponent. Let's say knight takes c4. Nah, that's no, that's no good. That won't cut it. Let's lift the rook right away. We're going to switch up the move order. I'm actually not going to take this pawn with check. Hmm. Okay, now... I was thinking I had a few more options. Like rook c3. Although there's still bishop c5. Also just knight takes maybe. Ah, maybe here and then knight takes. But that's like the other line. I think I should do knight takes. To attack the queen. Oh. Take. 
They could have gone check and then taken the bishop, by the way, but I had an idea against that. But now the queen is off the board. <laughs> they didn't like that. Brooke coming over for the GG. Thank you for the game, Internet Pilgrim. Let me switch back to uh, a non-headache-inducing set for some of you. <laughs> Right here. Wonder what the best move is. Queen takes c4 and then knight c4. Yeah, because I'm missing um, a piece or two in the attack. Ideally, I'd like my rook to be able to come to b3 here for the checkmate, right? But rook a3, black has the c4 move. So I tried to engineer the move order to allow me to do that. What was I thinking here? Queen d4, king g2, takes... Black could go for the rook, and then I was thinking takes. Takes of the pawn, and still try to get this here, and this knight is great because it controls a lot of squares. Ooh, but black has queen d5. Queen d5 I didn't factor into my uh, calculations. That does trade queens. Whites up a bunch of pawns here. Clearly better, I guess, just winning, but you know, this, this allows black to fight a little bit. Yeah, so Internet Pilgrim, I think... Kind of had the wrong philosophy against this opening. You want to open the position up rather than close it. When I've got my king on e2. I definitely didn't like giving your light square bishop and you know even the knight e3 move coming up. I think that's just a little too aggressive. I can understand you want to open things, but your chance was much earlier. Now my king is a little bit safer and the bishops are pretty strong. But thank you very much for the game. And thanks everyone for watching today. That was Lee Chess Plays. Two hour uh, per week extravaganza. Other streamers do it too. I'm not the only streamer that Lee Chess has do Lee Chess plays. It's a lot of fun. Like I said, I was talking about Shakyar Mamajarov. Um, there's a number of people. I think I saw, who was it? Ellen Nilsson, WFM Ellen Nilsson, um, was playing Lee Chess plays five days ago. So they constantly are working new people into the mix. And if you didn't get a chance today to play a game, there's always next time. But uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We're going to send the raid off to someone. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a good start to your week. And I will see you guys again soon. Take care. Bye.